I feel bad because my mindset for the past few days has been basically everything that Simply has been talking about, but the opposite. It's been bad. It's been, it's been thinking that I'm not good. I'm not worth thinking. I'm every run is bad. I'm failing and getting mad, and everything is just bad. That's been my mindset, and this is a Simply was Simply in that race was able to get that the worst possible mindset and the most negative feeling, and hold that feeling for an hour and forty five minutes. And he was able to finish the run, and that's what made him get so emotional, because he overcame that extreme negative emotion. And guess what? I gave up. I fucking reset it. As soon as I got a negative emotion, as soon as I messed up on cloud, cloud stage, I just reset it. You know what I mean? So I'm the weak one. Now, it's my turn to fight that and become strong again. It's my turn now. Oh my That's god! Cheese, you're a legend! You are a legend, Cheese! Oh my god, you are a legend! Holy... Oh my... Dude, my heart was beating. I'm gonna stay here, to just be a little bit professional, but dang, Cheese. Dang. Dang. What a legend. Hello ladies and gents, it's EasyScape. And a few days ago, on February 1st, 2020, some of the biggest speedrunning achievements and discoveries of recent time all occurred on the same day. If you haven't been keeping up, let me catch you up to speed. Over a month ago, a $4,000 bounty that was meant to conclude at the end of 2019 for the Super Mario 64 120 star category was cancelled. In response to this, I announced a brand new $1,000 bounty to make up for it. And in response to my bounty being made, two generous sponsors for the bounty, Alan Chatham and Ballistics Gaming, came forward and contributed $4,000 and $5,000 respectively, making it a bounty totaling $10,000 for whichever 120 star speedrunner would achieve the next 1 hour and 38 minute time. The bounty officially began on December 15th, and since then the competition has been tight, and all of the top runners have been grinding at attempts to try and claim the spot and also win the money. After a few weeks with the bounty staying alive, the European Speedrun Assembly decided to jump at the opportunity to make an entire event out of breaking the record. This was a 3 day long event where 7 of the top runners were flown out to Sweden to compete live for 14 hours each day. The event even had its own prize pool, $2500 for 1st, $1200 for 2nd, $500 for 3rd, and a tier down from there. But if the world record was actually broken at the event, an additional $5000 would be awarded to whoever won, not including another $5000 from the bounty. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think that the record would actually be broken at an event like this, for a number of reasons. The runners were all flown over to Sweden, and all had varying degrees of how awake they would be for the actual competition, and sleep in general. Compared to other esports, you don't normally have to play a game consistently for an hour and 40 minutes, with the little to no mistakes, with the margin of error being so incredibly high. Secondly, all of the runners were playing on monitors, not CRT televisions that most of them are used to. This was done by using RetroTank 2Xs to upscale the gameplay nearly laglessly to be displayed on monitors. And as long as the monitors have a low input delay, it's very comparable to playing on a CRT. But still, even the slightest difference in input delay can throw someone off their game and adjustments will have to be made to compensate. Lastly, most of the runners have never competed in a format like this before, especially not at a live marathon event. With all of this in mind, it's quite possible that Cheese had a slight advantage as he's probably the most used to long flights and traveling, He's done several marathon runs, and has competed in Super Mario 64 races for a long time now. But that still doesn't change the immense odds he was against to claim the record at this event. Since Cheese managed to beat the bounty record, and won the event at the same time, he won a total of $12,500. Some of the other top earners with the event and bounty combined were Punkation who won $3,200, Tago $1,300, Liam $1,250, and Simply $1,150. But everyone managed to win at least a little chunk of the prize, and almost every runner who competed managed to get a new personal best other than Simply and Liam, but they put out some really solid times as well in the mid 139s. Whenever I announced the original $1000 bounty, it was really just a way for me to try and make up for the people that may have actually been chasing for the original $4000 bounty, but I never could have expected it all to play out like this. Huge shout out to ESA for picking up the idea and executing it near flawlessly. I thought the presentation was great. So moving on to some other news, if some of you weren't aware, Arbitrary Code Execution was recently discovered in Ocarina of Time due to a new glitch discovery called Stale Reference Manipulation. With this glitch, it's possible to unload a rock in Link's hands while he's carrying it, and through a series of steps, it's possible to make the payload for the rock use X and Y values from firing a Deku Seed out of a slingshot. Some other prerequisites in setting up the Ace is setting up a file name with very specific characters, only available on the Japanese cart, 
and the glitch only being possible to be formed on the N64. In the first iteration of any percent runs, speedrunners were also required to have another controller in the third controller slot with very specific analog stick values and buttons held. Speedrunners had a lot of very interesting setups for doing this. In this version of the new any percent category, the game was now possible to be beaten in only 13 minutes. But like the natural progression of any speed game, new strategies were found. One of the first big changes was Mr. Cheese finding a new way to set up the payload without the addition of another controller. So this is no longer a thing. Faster movement and rupee routes were eventually refined, but the biggest skip so far was skipping obtaining the Ocarina, which saved roughly 2 minutes. Lazuz has been the dominant runner for the category for most of the game's progression so far, but just the other night, a runner named Save State managed to get a 939, although this was with the inclusion of a controller notch to get a specific camera coordinate almost instantly. I think this is going to spur a debate within the community to even allow strategies like this, but the biggest difficulty is how would it be enforced? The only way to know if someone is using notches is to require a hand cam, so this may be the first case where in a speedrun community, hand cams are required for world record contention. On top of all of this, there has also been a big discussion of whether or not to split the any percent categories, because even though this is still technically any percent, you know, as long as you consider the credits rolling as beating the game, but there are a lot of people who disagree, saying that beating the boss should be the indicator the run is over. I think this comes more from an angle of not wanting a boring category as a main category, because compared to the original any percent route, it was arguably much more fun to both speedrun and watch. Splitting categories can be a bit divisive in speedrunning communities, so it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out, and I think this conversation will fit in nicely with another video I'm working on, so we may have this conversation in the future. Also, Ballistics Gaming has decided to come back again with another bounty. This time $1000 for whichever speedrunner is holding the world record by February 29th. Good luck to anyone competing. And this isn't really relevant to February 1st since this happened on the 2nd, but Glitchymon also got a new world record in the 100% category, so congratulations to him. Okay, so I actually had to come back to this script because an Arcissa right now officially has the Ocarina Time any percent world record at a 919. It's so interesting to see Narcissa come back to the game and hold world record again, 6 years after the legendary 1810, which is now nearly cut in half. So congratulations to her, and in the next few months we'll see what the limits of this game truly are. On the same day Sub-10 was achieved in Ocarina of Time, arbitrary code execution was officially discovered in Majora's Mask, meaning it is now possible to warp to the credits in that game as well, by changing the cutscene that is played after playing the Song of Time to the ending cutscene. The method used to perform this is pretty much the same as the Ocarina of Time one, only slightly different. If you guys want to see more information about this, I've left an explanation video made by Seedborn in the description. So the same day this was all going down, there was again another world record achieved in Celeste Any%. Percent. A 27 minute, 18 second time by Marlin, meaning the game is getting just barely closer to that sub 27 barrier. I spoke to Marlin to figure out what a sub 27 might require. Obviously in such an optimized game like this, there's no one trick that is going to save all the time, there are just a bunch of small time saves all over the place. However, one of the biggest time saves runners have been implementing is a reroute where they get the cassette in 6A, and then play 6B instead of completing 6A, which can save up to 11 seconds. This was known to be optimal back in 2018, but it was really difficult so nobody did it. Marlon says with the strats he does now, he could probably save around 10 seconds, but so far the best he's done is only saving 2. The next trick Marlon isn't currently using in runs, but a few runners are, and that is his second auto-scroller skip in 4A. The strat itself saves 6 seconds, but is incredibly hard to pull off, so much that people have been referring to it as an RNG strat. Not that there is actually RNG involved, but it's just one of those tricks where you either get it, or you don't, while having little to no control over it succeeding. Easier strats which save 0.1 to 0.2 seconds here and there are probably more what the community is going to be looking for to slowly get the time down rather than big skips. Marlin says that even with his current strats, sub 27 is possible, but having a mistakeless run is extremely difficult to do. Something else that happened on February 1st was the elite community unhoarding 29 new world records, 11 of which were untied records. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, the Elite.net is a ranking website for speedrunners of GoldenEye 007 and Perfect Dark, and hoarding world record videos and dumping them all on the same day has been a tradition in the community since 2015. And this hoard featured a lot of upcoming and pro players, but one player that stuck out in this lineup was Perfect Ace, the best GoldenEye player in the world. So you knew when this dude was part of the unhoard, something big was going to happen. Let me list off some of the records that were obtained. In Perfect Dark, Ace obtained several untieds including Villa Special Agent 111, War Perfect Agent 51, War Special Agent 43, Extraction Special Agent 116, Pelagic 2 Perfect Agent 152, and Agent 37, completing an untied sweep of the entire level. 
In GoldenEye, he also achieved two new untieds, including Control Secret Agent 401 and 00 Agent 402, which means another untied sweep on the level, which is unprecedented for 2020. Another runner named Fernando Almeida saw an opportunity on an underused strategy on Surface 2 00, the record that was held by David Clemens and Perfect Ace at a 123. Ace had used this new strategy, and it was a good run, but it still had room for improvement. So Fernando went ahead and grabbed a 2 second untied, lowering it to 121. What was interesting about this is he was forced to use a VCR recording because his capture card broke, which meant he had to wait a long time before he could capture it for submission. So it just ended up becoming part of this horde. This was an insane time for a player ranked outside of the top 100. Last is Cali W, who's been an expert on Surface 1, having the world records on all three difficulties. He knew that both Secret and Double O Agent could be untied for a while, and ended up achieving them for this horde. His times were 146 on Secret Agent, and 147 on Double O. This was both Cali and Fernando's first time achieving untied world records. After this horde was dropped, the new community sum of best for GoldenEye became 1 hour and 11 minutes, and for Perfect Dark 1 hour and 27 minutes, which may be the end goal time for GoldenEye. Another notable world record obtained on February 1st was a Ratchet & Clank Any% NG Plus world record by Franscore, which was the first time the game was beaten in sub-19 minutes. Franscore has really been grinding the game a lot for the past year, and it's really cool to see such an amazing time achieved. Another run which was sort of swept underneath the rug like a lot of other world records that happened on the same day was the Oblivion world record being lowered by a second by Harvard, after a full year of not being touched, with the new world record now being a 3 minute and 19 second time. I think we'll be seeing this time be dropped even further in the next couple of weeks with Harvard's dedication, grinding, and the introduction of new tricks like Saddle Storage. Not only were a bunch of records and a lot of ace shenanigans discovered on the first, but there were a handful of some really big glitch discoveries. The first one was a new way to perform Barrier Skip and Wind Waker without needing to use a grappling hook. By dropping a bomb on Link once he's inside the damage portion of the barrier, while using a specific camera angle, will push Link forward enough to clip through the barrier. It saves time in the original Wind Waker, but not in Wind Waker HD, since grappling hook is required for super swims, and saves too much time to skip. Since the discovery, a lot of ingenious tricks and setups have been found in order to beat the rest of the game without the grappling hook. It's a really cool trick for the speedrun, and has definitely breathed life into a game nobody is really speedrunning, and it's now likely that the game can be beaten in under an hour. Also, just because I'm a huge fan of RPG speedruns, I felt the need to include these, even though they both happened on January 31st, and not February 1st. Firstly, the Final Fantasy X world record was lowered by nearly 3 minutes by Close to War, which is an absolutely incredible time for this game, and is only 7 minutes off its best possible time. Getting a sub-10 in this game would be incredible, but is unlikely without some new strats being discovered, or just godly RNG. Next up, there is also a glitch discovery in Final Fantasy VII, which allows us to spawn Materia. Materia is essentially what gives your players abilities, and also can be sold in shops, which means that spawning them in is pretty beneficial. Unfortunately, this is only made possible because of the game saving a cursor position, even when a party member isn't present, which was a quality of life feature that they added when they re-released the game. Still pretty cool glitch regardless. Alright, and the last things I want to cover in this video are two new big speedrunning competitions. The first one is a Guinness Speedrun World Record Competition, hosted by Speedrun.com. Basically, if you're able to maintain world record, you'll be granted a Guinness World Record trophy on your Speedrun.com profile, and can also apply for a real Guinness World Record title. I will admit, some of the categories for the games that they chose are kind of weird. With Super Mario Odyssey, they are tracking the fastest time to complete all six of the boss rematches, starting from any of the Mushroom Kingdom checkpoints. If we also look deeper into the rules, it disallows the use of glitches. So I guess not only are the categories arbitrary, but so are the rules. The other challenges are the fastest time to complete all of the Muspelheim and possible trials in God of War 2018 with common level equipment, and the fastest time to collect all six enchanted apples on the 10 years of Minecraft map. While I do feel like these Guinness World Records are generally a good idea, I feel like they should be thrown on popular categories of brand new games to add onto the hype. Kind of like the bounties that we talked about earlier, but instead for Guinness World Records. These categories are just too arbitrary and don't look like a lot of fun, at least in my opinion. With the fact that only 4 runners have submitted to Super Mario Odyssey, and absolutely no submissions for Minecraft and God of War at all, might be a little telling. The other competition is a live French speedrunning event with a 20,000 euro prize pool. Now the dates for everything happening are going by pretty quickly. They announced the event on January 30th, Speedrunner submission deadlines are on February 13th, and the event is on February 24th in Lille, France. Apparently they have some big sponsors backing this event, and they are already claiming that there will be over a thousand spectators. On paper this all sounds amazing, but I'll have to wait for the event to unfold to see how this all plays out. 
The games and categories they're including are Portal Any% percent Glitchless, Sekiro Shura Ending Unrestricted, Celeste Any% percent, and Minecraft Any% percent Glitchless Set Seed. There will be 8 runners in total and 4 races. Winners of each race will receive 4,000 euros and losers 1,000. If you guys want even more context on any of the stuff I talked about in this video, I have an insane amount of links in the description, which is why I only went over things generally. If you guys enjoyed this video and perhaps want more speedrunning update videos like it, leave a like as it's the best way to show support. But anyways guys, that's pretty much all I have to say. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more content, and check out my second channel on Twitch because I post even more speedrunning content over there too. With that being said, thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you all have a beautiful life.